Welcome. Today we shall be looking at understanding risk management framework steps. But before we start, my name is Emmanuel Cyprian from Titec Consult. Before we look at the various steps under risk management framework, let us look at what is risk management. Simply put, risk management is how do you manage risk? How do you make sure that the risk that each organization faces as a result of what they do is adequately you know, identified, is adequately you know, mitigated? That is simply what is risk management. So risk management is a procedural activities, you know, is, is a dynamic approach that provides the capability to more effectively manage information system related security risk in a highly devised environment of complex and sophisticated cyber threats, ever increasing system vulnerabilities and rapidly changing mission and business goals. That is what is risk management. That is a dynamic approach of how the organization manages risk that is associated with what they do in the world of complexity, in the world of sophisticated cyber threats and ever increasing vulnerabilities and rapidly changing organizations, missions and business functions. Now, what are the things embedded in risk management framework? And um, what are the characteristics of risk management framework that you need to understand? One, risk management framework promotes the concept of near real-time risk management and ongoing information system authorization through the implementation of robust continuous monitoring process. What do we mean by this? That is, with the aid of risk management of framework, now you can, on time, understand if a system, an information system, is adequately secured or not. Another characteristic of risk management framework is that it encourages the use of, of automation. Now, in the course of applying or implementing the risk management framework, there are different tools that has been developed out there. Examples, I'm not trying to promote any tool here. Example is Archer, example is CSAM, example is Modulo, Risk Vision, Exata. These are various tools that has been developed that will aid the implementation of the risk management framework uh, process. Another characteristic of risk management uh, framework is it integrates information security into the enterprise architecture and system development lifecycle. This means that the risk management framework steps is integrated, is mapped into the system development life cycle, which means at every phase of the system development life cycle, there are, you know, the risk management framework steps that needs to be carried out. Another characteristic of risk management framework is that it provides emphasis on the selection of security controls, implementation of security controls, assessment of security controls, a monitoring of security controls and the authorization of information system. It places emphasis on this, which we are going to be looking at, you know, shortly. And another characteristic of risk management framework that you need to know is that it establishes responsibilities and accountability for security controls deployed within an organization information system. This means that each and every person has a role to play in implementing the risk management framework. Now, that is, there is the you know, information system owner function. There is the common control, you know, provider role. There is the information system security officer's role. There is the information security assessor's role, the executive functions role, information security architect, and so on and so forth. Now, there is no more excuses, you know, why a particular function or tax under the risk management framework should not be carried out. So each and every person has their roles and responsibilities to play in making sure 
that this risk management framework or risk management of risk in an enterprise environment is adequately you know, implemented. So having said this, let us now look at the various steps under the risk management framework. Now, these are the steps in the risk management framework. Number one, categorization of information system. Number two, selection of security controls. Number three, security control implementation. Number four, security control assessment. Number five, information system authorization. Number six, monitoring of security controls. These are the six steps of the risk management framework that you need to know and you need to understand. Now, whoever is teaching you these six steps or the concept of risk management framework should be able to break these six steps down, explain it explicitly in a way that you understand it. And that is part of what I do. You know, I have a teaching, you know, uh, and consulting, you know, classes for that. So I teach my students explicitly these six steps of the risk management framework. They are hands-on that I teach my students. So in this video, it's just going to be a brief explanation. You can get the details of it on these YouTube videos. So give me a call, reach out to me if you want an in-depth explanation, hands-on training on these uh, risk management framework steps. So let's take a brief um, uh, explanation of each of these steps. The first step, which is categorization. Now, you need to understand, first of all, what is categorization? Two, why do you categorize? Three, how do you categorize? Categorization simply means sorting out. Categorization simply means you are classifying. You're trying to put some things in some particular space or some particular position, sorting out something, you know, classifying something. But in this dimension, what are we classifying? What are we categorizing? We are categorizing information and information system. So you need to know how to categorize. You also need to know why do you categorize? You categorize why so you'll be able to determine the sensitivity and the criticality of the information that is being processed, that is being uh, shared, that is being stored in an information system. And then how do you categorize? You categorize by you know, identifying the information types, once you've identified information types, so what is information type? That is, these are the information that is processed, stored, transmitted, shared in an information system. Now, the next thing you do is you assign potential impact for each of the security objective, that is the CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability for each of the information type for you to be able to arrive at your high watermark. And from the high watermark, you'll be able to determine the overall security impact of the system. For more details of this categorization of information system, check out my video on that. The second step of the risk management framework is selection of security controls. Believe you me, security control is the bedrock of any information system. Now, what is security control? Security control simply means countermeasures, security measures that you're putting in place in an information system to help you secure that system from what? From unauthorized access, from unauthorized uh, modification, and making sure the system is available 24-7. So that is the security objective. So security controls are meant to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, you need to understand, how do you select security control? Why do you select security control? Where do you select security controls from? What is the NIST publication that guides you in selection of security control? I've defined security control. How do you select security control? You select security control from NIST 853 revision four, according to your categorized you know, uh, impact value. That is how you select security control, and that is where you select security controls from. For more details of this, check out my videos on selection of security control. Now, the next step is security control implementation. The selected security control needs to be implemented. And who are those that implement this control? The database administrators, 
the system administrators, the firewall administrators, the network administrators. These are the guys that implement the security control. And while they're implementing the security control, they take documentations, they put down some documentation, which we as security analysts make use of to develop implementation statement. Now, the fourth step in this risk management framework is security control assessment. What is assessment? Assessment is like auditing. Assessment is the same thing like auditing. You're trying to verify. You're trying to confirm. You want to be sure that the controls that are implemented, they are implemented properly, they are working as intended, and they're producing desired results. That is what security control assessment is. And how do you assess security control? You assess security control by examining documentation, by interview, and by performing testing, either automated testing or manual testing. Now, the number fifth step is information system authorization. What is information system authorization? This means the system is hereby authorized to operate. Now, after the controls has been assessed, now the next step is to authorize the system. The authorizing officer deem it fit to say, okay, the risk you know, associated with this information system you know, is within our risk threshold. So the authorizing official is accepting that the risk implemented, the controls implemented is enough to reduce the risk and the residual risk, the AO, is also accepting the residual risk. Now, once the, he accepts this, he issues an ATO authorization to operate. The last step in the risk management framework is monitoring of security controls. There are strategies that you need to put in place to monitor these security controls, to making sure that they are operating you know, as intended. One of the strategies is you want to make sure that you continuously assess you know, those security controls. Another strategy is to making sure that the security authorization package and other security artifacts are updated, you know, annually at minimum. And um, your decommissioning strategy also must be part of it. These are the steps under risk management framework. Now, what do you gain? What are the things that you gain after the risk management framework training? If you come to my training or you go to any training, these are the things you should look out for. These are your expectations, you know, after the training. The things at the end of the training, you would understand and be able to categorize information system. Two, at the end of the training, you should understand and be able to select recommended security controls. Three, at the end of the training, you should be able to understand security control implementation. Number four, at the end of the training, you would be able to understand, you would understand and able to assess security control. The number fifth you know, expectation of what you gain after this training is that you would understand and be able to develop and update the different document that makes up the authorization package, such as the SSP, the SAR, and the POEM. Number six expectation is that after this RMF training, you would also understand the various NIST special publications, such as special publication 837 revision one, special publication 853 revision, revision four, 853A revision four, 830, 818. Check out my videos on understanding of risk of NIST special publications. The number seven expectation on what you gain after attending this training is that you are prepared to take the certification exams. Another uh, expectation on what you gain after this training is that you will be able to build a winning resume. If you come to my training, you will be able to build a winning resume after this RMF training. The number nine, you know, uh, expectation is after the training, you are confident and bold to start interviewing for cybersecurity job. The number 10 expectation and gain is that you will be able to understand the different roles you could be hired for. And number 11 is that you will be confident to perform the task whenever you are hired. Now, what are the different job titles, roles, positions, you know, you could be hired to occupy after taking this risk management framework training? 
Number one is you could be hired as an information system security officer, ISSO. You could also be hired as an information security assessor. You could also be hired as an information security analyst. You could be hired as an information assurance analyst. You could be hired as an information security compliance analyst. You could also be hired as assessment and authorization analyst. You could also be hired as a privacy compliance analyst. And you could also be hired as FISMA compliance analyst. These are just few of the positions, roles, or title that goes along with this risk management framework. There could be high, there could be more than this. Each organization can call the they can give it any title or role. But the most important thing is you understanding the job description and you having confidence enough to do the training. Like I always tell people, this risk management framework training is your easiest path into the career of cybersecurity. Reach out to me if you want more detailed explanation hands-on, either personalized or group training, or uh, maybe your organization wants to retrain their employees, reach out to me. In this video, you'll see my email address, you see my website, reach out to me, and I will gladly you know, do that for you. Thank you very much for listening to this, you know, to this video and watching this video. And um, more videos are coming. The next video that I'll be posting will be understanding some of the risk NIST special publication. Thank you very much.